Pat Bakes a Cake. Sarah and Julian were going off to Wooler for a week to see Gran. There was a school holiday and the weather wasn't too bad now so it was a good time to go. Besides, they hadn't seen Gran for months and months. Pat saw them off at Pencaster Station very early in the morning. Sarah had left all kinds of nice things in the fridge for Pat's dinners. But Pat thought to himself, I'll have a nice surprise ready for when they come back. Later that day, when he'd finished delivering the post, Pat went to the village post office. This time, he went to the grocery part of the counter. He bought some flour, margarine, sugar, eggs, icing sugar, cherries and dried fruit. Hmm, said Mrs. Goggins, it sounds as though your Sarah's making a cake. Oh no, said Pat, <laughs> they've gone to Wooler for the week. I'm making a cake. It's to be a surprise for when they come back. Do you often bake cakes, Pat? No, I've never made one before, said Pat, but I've got a good book from the mobile library that tells you how to do it. The book says it's easy. Won't Sarah be pleased? I hope so, said Mrs. Goggins. Pat set to work that evening. He set everything out on the kitchen table with the library book propped open at the page headed Fruit Cake, ready to begin. He read aloud from the book. Two hundred and fifty grams of flour. He noticed that there were two kinds of flour, plain and self-raising. Well, it's a plain cake, said Pat, so I'll use plain flour. He got the scales out and began to pour the flour into the bowl. He noticed that the dial on the scales was marked in ounces. It said not a word about grams. Hmm, I wonder how many ounces there are in 250 grams. It sounds a lot to me. I'll just have to guess. He weighed out 25 ounces of flour and read from the book again. Place flour and salt in bowl and rub in the margarine. It was all in grams again, so he put a good dollop of margarine in the bowl and shook the salt cellar over it for a while. What's all this? Rub in the margarine. How on earth do you do that? He rubbed the piece of margarine about on the flour. But all it did was to puff flour up into his face. He simply buried the margarine in the flour in the end. Add sugar and fruit and beat the eggs and milk together. Mix everything together until it is soft. It was still in grams, so he had to guess how much sugar and how much fruit to put in. Well, Sarah always seemed to guess when she made cakes, and hers were always delicious. He mixed it as well as he could, but it seemed very lumpy. Place in a six-inch tin and bake in a moderate oven for one and a quarter hours. He couldn't find a ruler to measure the tins, so he used the first one he found, which did look rather big. Then, what is a moderate oven, said Pat. He looked at the back of the book, he looked at the front of the book, he looked all through the book, but it didn't say anywhere what it meant by a moderate oven. So he lit the oven and twirled the knob round to number seven. Seven for luck, he said. It's my lucky number always. He popped the cake in the oven and closed the door. He looked at his watch. Now, if we go to watch television, Jess... The cake will be ready after the news. Jeff settled down by the fire, and Pat settled down in his armchair. The fire was warm. Quite soon, Jess's eyes began to close. Quite soon, Jess was fast asleep. Pat watched a play on television. It was a boring play. Quite soon, Pat's eyes began to close. 
and quite soon Pat was fast asleep. Pat had a dream. He was being attacked by a tiger in India. It was trying to eat his leg. He could feel its sharp claws pulling at him. Pat woke up with a jump. Jess was clawing at his trouser leg and there was a smoky smell coming from the kitchen. Pat jumped up and ran to the kitchen. He opened the oven. Clouds of smoke came puffing out and oh, what a smell. Pat turned the oven off. He put the big oven gloves on his hands and felt in the middle of the smoke for the cake. He found it. He brought it out and dropped it in the sink. When the smoke cleared, Pat saw a cindery mess in the bottom of the tin. It didn't look like a cake at all. When Pat tried to put it in the rubbish bin, he found the cake would not come out of the tin. He had to throw tin and cake and all away. Never mind, Jess, said Pat. We have a week before they come back. There's time to have another try. When Pat went again the next day to buy flour and sugar and raisins and cherries and eggs and dried fruit, Mrs. Goggins said, Goodness me, Pat, are you making another cake? No, said Pat. Well, yes, I am in a way. The first one went wrong and I'm having another try. Well, better luck second time round, said Mrs. Goggins. When Pat called at Greendale Farm, Mrs. Pottage was busy making a cake. What's all this about rubbing the margarine, said Pat. It doesn't tell you how to do it in my book. That's easy, said Mrs. Pottage. Look, you just cut the margarine into small pieces and rub it between your fingers until it mixes with the flour. Pat watched Mrs. Pottage's fingers closely. Now I see, he said, smiling. When Pat called on Dorothy Thompson, she was just putting the oven on. What's all this bake in a moderate oven, said Pat. It, it, it doesn't tell you in my cookery book. Gas mark four, said Dorothy. They expect you to know that, of course. Pat made a note in the back of his diary. Thanks, he said. I wish I'd known that last night. When Pat called on Miss Hubbard, she was making homemade wine. She was weighing out fruit and sugar. Do you know anything about these uh, grams they have in the cookery book these days, said Pat. I stick to ounces, said Miss Hubbard. I'll have no truck with these newfangled grams. The trouble is, said Pat, I'm trying to make a cake from a library book, and it's all in grams. I got in a proper muddle. Cake, said Miss Hubbard. Library book? What a lot of rubbish. Look, here's my old mother's recipe book. Turn to page 20. There's a lovely recipe for fruit cake there. Copy that down and you won't go wrong. Thanks, said Pat. He wrote it in the back of his diary. When Pat called in on Ted Glenn, he told him all about his cake and what a mess he'd made of it. I've heard about it, said Ted. News travels fast in Greendale. I think everybody knows about your cake. The trouble is, said Pat, I've spoilt the tin as well as the cake, and Mrs. Goggins doesn't sell cake tins. Don't worry, said Ted. I'll make you one. I've been wanting something to try my new welder on. Call in after you've finished your letters, and it'll be ready for you. Thanks, Ted. You're a marvel. When Pat called on Granny Dryden, she was putting the icing on a birthday cake for Katie and Tom Pottage. She had put the icing in a bag with a hole in the corner. She was squeezing the bag so that the icing came out and wrote itself on the cake. It made patterns and words. Pat watched her. That's clever, said Pat. I think I'll try that. Pat collected his new cake tin from Ted on his way home. It was rather a strange cake tin. It looked as though it had started life as something quite different. Part of a car, or a washing machine, perhaps. It's not like the cake tins in the shops, said Ted. None of this non-stick nonsense. But it'll do the job okay if you give it a good greasing. Pat looked at a tin of motor grease on a shelf. Ted laughed. 
<laughs> Not with that. You have to get some butter on a piece of greaseproof paper and rub it round the tin inside. It stops the cake from sticking to the tin. You'll never get it out if you don't do that. There's a lot to learn about making cakes, said Pat. I never knew there was so much to it. Thanks, Ted. Cheerio. Pat had another try at making his cake that evening. He did all the things that his friends had told him. He set the alarm clock to tell him when the cake would be ready. Jess went off to the potage's barn hunting mice until it was all over. He thought it would be safer there. When Pat took the cake out of the oven, there was no smell of burning. There was a lovely smell of newly baked cake just as there was when Sarah made one. It came out of the tin perfectly, and it looked lovely. All Greendale was waiting the next day to hear about Pat's cake. The news was good, but it still had to be iced. And, as Dr. Gilbertson said, we won't know if it's a success until Sarah comes home. The next day, Pat started on the icing. The first batch of icing was too thin. When Pat put it on the cake, it slowly ran down the sides, onto the table. The second batch was too thick. It wouldn't come out of the icing bag. The third batch was just right. Pat wrote, Welcome Home, in pink icing, and left it to set. When Sarah and Julian came home, they were pleased to see a cake waiting for them. They all had a slice, and it was delicious. I didn't know you could make cakes, said Sarah. What a lovely surprise. Did it take long? No, said Pat, only a few days. Sarah thought that sounded a long time, just for making one cake. But she was enjoying it so much that she didn't say so. The next day, Sarah found the remains of her cake tin in the dustbin. I think it was a good thing that Pat, at that moment, was at the far end of Greendale delivering letters. But he had a long story to tell when he came home. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat, and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be not Bring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really Man. Everybody knows his bright red fan. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be not ring letters through your door. Letters through your door. Black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the 